I think most of us have some vague idea of what seasonal affective disorder is by now driving home, you know, where it has been sunlight, now it's dark, but give us a definition for it. Well, basically seasonal affective disorder is actually a form of depression. And ironically, I just had a visit with a lady, she's a teacher, and she had all the symptoms. She had sadness, decreased interest. She just wasn't motivated to do anything. She felt guilty, but she didn't know why. She told me that she couldn't concentrate on her lesson plan for her students. Um, her appetite was up. She was gaining weight. She was craving starches. But what really worried me and had me to take her off work for a little while and consider medication she's going to go for therapy is she told me that she was having thoughts of hurting herself. And, and, and this was very worrisome. And this is what we have to worry about with seasonal affective disorder. It, it's a form of depression and it can be very dangerous. That is very interesting. I, I guess I didn't realize that it was a form of depression. Um, what, what causes this? Is it truly the, the less light? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, it affects us. I mean, basically, we have our circadian rhythms and they're affected with daylight and, and darkness. And basically, when there's less uh, sunlight, because it gets dark so early, it throws everything off. And then there are neurotransmitters in our brain to include the serotonin. It normally goes down and then the melatonin goes up and it just makes us just thrown off and a lot of people will have this disorder. They'll feel very sad and just have all the symptoms and signs of depression. That's why it's so important if you are having these symptoms or someone you love, encourage them to talk to a medical provider and really be evaluated because like my patient earlier today, you know, she told me that she was thinking about hurting herself. So this is something that is very serious. Dr. Quinn, is this something that you just kind of grow out of as you get used to the darkness or is there any kind of at home treatment that you can use or anything like that? Well, it just depends on the person. Different people are affected different ways depending on different circumstances of that particular individual. Like the patient that I saw earlier, she's going to go for therapy and some of the treatments include cognitive psychotherapy. For some people, they use what's called light box therapy and that's where they are exposed to very intense uh, beams of light and what's called a light box. And uh, interestingly, my daughter was in school in New York and they have even worsening of early uh, darkness and they had light boxes on campus where the student nurse would assign students for so many minutes a day to just get light box therapy if they had these symptoms. There's also medications. We talked about serotonin being down. The serotonin reuptake uh, inhibitor medications such as your Lexapro or Cymbalta are very effective. The uh, FDA just approved bupropion for treatment of this disorder. But the take home is it's so important to be evaluated by your medical provider if you even suspect that you or a loved one has this condition because it could be dangerous. And, and so a person should visit their doctor, uh, their medical provider, if they have any of these feelings, feeling de depressed, mm -hmm. uh, uh, certainly if they're thinking of harming themselves yeah. um, and, and all those other things. I mean, it's just, I don't know if it just wears you down and you don't even feel like getting up and doing anything or whatever. Well, that's why we have to look out for our buddies, because sometimes, you know, it takes a loved one to say, hey, come on and get in the car. Let's go see our doctor. Let's talk to them and let's make sure that you're OK. All right. Dr. Quinn, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah. Thank you.